A very good morning. I am Lakshmana Rana Gunta, NEET Zoology faculty at Super Sixty, Dupulwalsa, Sri Kakulam. Today, our topic of discussion is classification of animals, particularly the invertebrate phyla. Animals are split into two major groups: the non-chordates and chordates. Chordates, as you know, they possess or they have a notochord. in some point of their life whereas non chordates they don't have notochord in their life we are now we are going to discuss the invertebrate phyla before we go to this let us know what is an invertebrate and what is a vertebrate vertebrates are those animals having backbone having backbone okay invertebrates they don't have any backbone even though some chordates are there like eurochordata cephalochordata even though they are they are chordates they won't possess any vertebral column now we are going to discuss the invertebrate phyla the first phylum is porifera 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 the word itself indicates the four bearing animals the term porifera was first coined by robert grant first coined by robert grant and the animal nature of these porifers or sponges was first established by robert grant it was also first established by robert grant robert grant first coined the term porifera and he also established the animal nature of sponges porifera includes primitive all primitive multicellular animals multicellular means they have been limited to cellular level of organization only there is no tissue level of organization is found in porifera they are the multicellular primitive animals they are commonly known as sponges commonly known as sponges generally they are marine some families like potamolepidae spongilidae they live in fresh water radially symmetrical porifera they exhibit radial symmetry radial symmetry means the animals can be cut into two equal halves two equal half in a number of planes in any plane that passes through the principal axis that passes through the principal axis some porifers or some sponges they are asymmetrical means they cannot be divided into two equal halves all sponges they are sessile sessile means they are limited to a particular place and they won't show self locomotion they won't show any self locomotion and the body wall of these sponges it is composed of two cellular layers outermost layer is called as the pinacoderm outer layer is called as pinacoderm and the inner layer is called as coenoderm both these layers that is the outer pinacoderm and inner coenoderm they are separated from a gelatinous matrix called as the mesohyl here you can clearly observe these are the coenocytes or collar cells which are present surrounding the spongocil cavity whereas the, these are pinacocytes here and there there are porocytes which allow the water into the spongocil cavity here you can observe the a coenocyte a collar cell a collar cell sponges have water transport system or canal system the water current system or water transport system or canal system it is very much essential in obtaining food material excreting the waste products and obtaining oxygen etc and water enters into the spongocil through these small pores called as ostia these pores are called as ostia and these ostia they lead into the spongocil cavity from there it goes out through an a big opening called as the osculum this is the osculum okay and the body of sponges is supported by a skeleton made up of spicules or spongin fibers or sometimes both spicules and spongin fiber spicules may be calcareous or siliceous based on the material if they are made with calcium car carbonate they are called as calcareous spicules if they are made with 
silicon dioxide SiO2 they are called as siliceous spicules and sponges are filter feeders means they feed by straining food particles and suspended matter from the water they feed that's why they are called as filter feeders and digestion is intracellular means the digestion takes place within the cell in our humans the digestion is extracellular digestion here in sponges the digestion is intracellular digestion these sponges they are hermaphroditic hermaphroditic or monoecious means both the sexes are present in a the same individual asexual reproduction takes place by means of fragmentation and budding and sexual reproduction by the formation of gametes fertilization is in internal and uh, direct development is indirect involving uh, uh, different types of larvae like parenchymula, trichemella, amphiblastula, which are morphologically uh, dissimilar from that of the adult. Coming to the classification of phylum porifera, I already told that the spicules they play an important role in the classification of porifera. Based on the type of spicules, phylum porifera is cla classified into three classes the calcarea, hexactinellida, and demospongia. The, these are the three classes out of which the calcarea includes all those sponges whose endoskeleton is made up of calcareous spicules. Calcareous spicules. Whereas hexactinellida and demospongia, both of them, they include the sponges which are made up of siliceous spicules. Out of this, hexactinellida include the sponges with siliceous spicules but six rayed these spicules are six rayed already i told you that these are diacting spicule triacting spicules three rays two rays and here they are six rays they they, they are called as hexactin spicules and tetractin spicules and polyactin spicules here in the hexactin elida they bear siliceous spicules and six rayed spicules this type of siliceous spicules are observed in hexactin elida okay and demospongia they also include siliceous spicule but other than six rayed spicules means here other than six rayed means they may be triactin spicules tetractin spicules etc calcarea calcarea the sponges they live in shallow and marine waters shallow marine waters and they may lead solitary or colonial mode of life and the examples include leucosolenia this one is leucosolenia and cycon leucosolenia cycon and grantia these are the examples for calcarea coming to the next class second class hexactinellida hexactinellida hexa means six this hexactinellida includes euplectilla and hyalonema. Euplectilla is also called as the venous flower basket. Venous flower basket. Whereas hyalonema, it is called as glass rope sponge. Glass rope sponge. They are the examples for hexactinellida. They live in the deeper part of the sea. Deeper part of the sea. And they are mostly they are solitary. Means they lead individually. Life, their life individually. Okay, not in colonies. Coming to the third one, Demospongia. Demospongia includes marine or freshwater sponges. Unlike that of Calcarea and Hexactinellida, which includes marine sponges, this Demospongia includes the freshwater sponges also. The examples for this Demospongia are Spongilla and Euspongia. Spongilla is called as the freshwater sponge. And this U spongia or spongia is called as the bath sponge. Bath sponge. Coming to next phylum that is Cilentarata. Cilentarata is also called as Nidaria because of the presence of specialized cells, nidoblasts, called as nidoblasts. They are aquatic and mostly marine. Mostly marine. They are diploblastic organisms. Diploblastic means the cells they are arranged in. Ectoderm and endoderm. Mesoderm is absent. First tissue level of organization is observed in sealant rates. First tissue level means in porifera we have observed the cellular level of organization. Whereas here in sealant rate we can observe tissue level of organization. 
they are radially symmetric here you can observe the radial symmetry means they can be cut into two equal halves in any plane passing through the center axis and two basic body forms are observed that is the polyp and medusa here you can observe the polyp form and this one is medusa form and these two forms they alternate with each other in the life cycle that's why it is called as metagenesis and these nidarians they bear the specialized cells called as nidoblast cells or stinging cells or nidocytes okay these nidocytes they are present mostly on the tentacles and because of the presence of these nidocytes they are name nidaria name nidaria these nidocytes they are used for anchorage defense and capture of the prey earlier name cilentrata is based on the presence of cilentron cavity in the center in the center of the hydra or whatever it may be there is a cavity that cavity is called as cilentron cavity based on this cilentron cavity the earlier name was cilentrata but now it is called nidaria and asexual reproduction is by means of budding here you can observe a hydra and it is a small bud developed from the body and after development it is detached from the hydra and it leads a, in an individual life and sexual reproduction is by syngony syngony means fusion of gametes fusion of gametes and the development is indirect involving a free swimming planular larva here you can observe the planular larva free swimming the cilia presence of cilia indicates its free swimming mode of life okay phylum nidaria is divided into three classes hydrozoa scyphozoa and anthozoa hydrozoa includes all hydras hydra scyphozoa includes jellyfishes here you can observe the jellyfish and anthozoa includes sea anemones and corals okay coming to the first one hydrozoa hydrozoa mostly they are marine marine and uh, some hydras uh, they are maybe fresh watered and nidocytes the stinging cells nidocytes or nidoblasts they are located on the ectoderm the examples are hydra physalia obelia this physalia is also called as the portuguese man of war portuguese man of war and this obelia is called as commonly called as c for c for coming to the second class of phylum nidaria the scyphozoa scyphozoa include jellyfishes and all are marine and solitary means they lead individual mode of life and all are medusoid forms here in hydrozoa we observed both medusoid forms and polypoid forms this one is polypoid form and this one is medusoid form and whereas in scyphozoa all are medusoid forms all are medusoid forms nidocytes they are located on ectoderm and endoderm both ectoderm and endoderm whereas in hydrozoa the nidocytes are they located on ectoderm only and coming to the uh, examples of scyphozoa the arelia arelia this one is arelia and this one is rhizostoma rhizostoma these are the examples of scyphozoa and coming to the third class the anthozoa anthozoa includes anemones and corals anthozoa all are marine all are marine and only polyp forms are observed in scyphozoa all are medusoid forms in anthozoa all are polypoid forms in hydrozoa both polyp and medusoid forms are there and the nidocytes located on ectoderm and endoderm unlike that of hydra hydrozoa nidocytes are present in ectoderm and endoderm the examples for this anthozoa includes adansia metridium penatula gorgonia this penatula is also called as the sea pen sea pen and this gorgonia is called as the sea fan sea fan coming back to okay the invertebrates the next phylum is tinophora tinophora is also called as a nidaria a nidaria as they don't have nidocytes or nidoblasts these are some illustrations of tinophores and this tinophora they are known as sea walnuts or comb jellies are sea gooseberries sea gooseberries sea walnuts are comb jellies 
these are considered to be the close relatives of cnidarians as uh, they are also limited to tissue level of organization and uh, most of the characters they are similar to cnidarians they are considered as the close relatives of cnidarians these tenophores they are exclusively marine uh, like that of echinodermates these tenophores also they are exclusively marine they are diploblastic they are diploblastic means they are two layers ectoderm and endoderm is there and mesoderm is absent tissue level of organization is seen as like that of cnidarians and the particular character of these the tenophores is the body bears eight external rows of ciliated comb plates ciliated comb plates tino means tino means comb comb plates are there that's why they are called as tenophores these eight comb plates you can observe here in the diagram okay these are comb plates eight in number these comb plates are eight in number and the most important thing with this tenophores is they exhibit bioluminescence bioluminescence is well marked in tenophores bioluminescence means is a phenomena emitting of light by living organism okay and there are specialized cells the cells are lasso cells or coloblast cells these are glue cells that are helpful in capturing the food in capturing the food the sexes are not separate that's why they are called as monoecious or hermaphrodite reproduction is only by sexual means reproduction is always by sexual means fertilization is external with indirect development includes its larva called as cdpid larva most important larva cdpid larva okay based on the presence or absence of tentacles presence or absence of tentacles tenophores are class classified into two classes two classes tentaculata nuda tentaculata it the, uh, includes the adults with two aboral tentacles two aboral tentacles whereas nuda won't bear any tentacles even the larva stages also they won't bear any tentacles coming to the first one tentaculata means they bear two aboral tentacles these are the representatives of tentaculata pleurobrachia hormifora this here you can observe a pair of tentacles a pair of tentacles in pleurobrachia because of the presence of a pair of tentacles this one they exhibit biradial symmetry not radial symmetry biradial means it can be cut into two equal halves only in two planes two planes that passes through the principal axis and this is hormi fora hormi fora and coming to the next class nuda nuda it includes the tenophores without tentacles without tentacles the nuda the name itself indicates examples are bero here you can observe eight comb plates but there are no tentacles means the all those tenophores without tentacles are included in the class nuda class nuda okay thank you thank you very much and uh, in our next class we are going to discuss the platyhelminthes ascahelminthes and anelida thank you